in that as well. So welcome to this third session of Aging Well. We have been doing this program once a month as uh, you know, we are passionate about preventive health and also integrative medicine. Uh, and we want to uh, use this as a discussion forum, an awareness building session. And we also want it to be interactive and we look forward to all of you sharing your thoughts on these topics as well. So today's topic is about harmony in health. And uh, it's interesting because Dr. Manasa is a Ayurvedic physician. And uh, you know, just to understand how that can be integrated into mainstream medicine or the concept of health as we think of it today. So just to let a uh, few of you who are new to uh, Pramea, just to let you know about our journey from 2016. We started in 2016 as a preventive and a supportive care organization. To date, more than 7,000 patients um, have visited Pramea in some way or the other, either online or offline. And uh, we have a flagship cancer support program. We have more than 1,000 participants there. So our uh, you know, focus is on providing care, supportive care to these patients. We have uh, about 15 experienced healthcare professionals with us, who, all of who share the vision of Pramea, that is preventive and supportive care. So what do we do here other than providing supportive care for cancer patients? We want to tackle this non-communicable disease. You know, that's really the chronic uh, diseases, which are most of them are uh, because of lifestyle um, uh, reasons or bad lifestyle or inappropriate lifestyle management, people end up with chronic illnesses such as diabetes, hypertension, some cardiac problems, respiratory problems, obesity, mental health, and even some cancers. So how can we address all of that through this preventive health program? We have curated sessions for yoga, meditation, mental health, and nutrition, and also pre and post a lot of counseling and uh, behavioral uh, uh, therapies for neurocognitive problems. Next slide, please. So just to introduce both of us today, the next slide, please. Yeah, I'm Dr. Sandhya Ravi. I'm a breast surgeon. I'm managing director of Premier. I have been a clinician, more or less focusing on breast health for the last uh, 30 odd years. And, um, you know, uh, at some point in my life, I decided that I need to spend a lot of time on preventive and supportive care because uh, simply by virtue of the fact that I see patients where I know for certain that lifestyle changes will make a difference. With me today is Dr. Mansa, a very young, enthusiastic and passionate uh, Ayurvedic uh, physician she is a very competent professional, and she also is very interested in promoting holistic health. Is the audio clear now? Someone said the audio is not smooth. Mm -hmm. It's fine now, ma'am. It's fine. Okay, so today's topic is about personalized medicine. So we think, just one minute, I'll just uh, switch on to, uh, please give.
am i audible or not you're audible ma'am okay sorry for the interruption yeah so as early as 400 bc you know uh, this personalized medicine was known in fact it was hippocrates who said that it's far more important to know what person has the disease than what disease the person has so it was important to understand who had this disease rather than knowing what the disease was because knowing the person could actually enable us to treat him better next slide i'm turning off the video because the bandwidth may be better we all are similar of course you know as a human race we are all same especially if you look at the philosophical aspect we are saying all of us are one but we are also different and modern science has enabled us to look at personalized medicine in a different way in some ways good in some ways problematic both in clinical research patient care it really has been very very impactful because we have started to understand more about disease more about uh, the technologies of health us provide targeted therapies personalized medicine for several health problems especially in the area of cancer we are able to find out the genetic example for breast cancer if we know that somebody has the gene for breast cancer we are able to target their treatment for that for them differently from the rest of the crowd so in some ways it's really been a boon next slide but looking at it as a one side size fits all is not really been very helpful it's like going to a shoe store and buying a pair of shoes without actually looking at the size so in the last few decades this all of you would have heard about the human genome project where the the genetic code the human genetic code has been unraveled it's the work is still going on we are still able to identify several genes for several diseases which are uh, you know could be targeted so personalized medicine in the 21st century is all about dna and genes and here we are using this information to help us make decisions to prevent disease to manage the disease to treat the disease etc and what is exciting is that we can choose a preventive plan that is just right for one person and uh, especially like i told you in the field of cancer we are able to choose the proper medication therapy and give it at the correct dose for those people so that way we are actually uh, avoiding over treating certain people who will not benefit from the treatment and providing the right treatment to people who will benefit from the treatment next slide please so in conclusion of what this modern medicine how we are looking at personalized medicine is that we are able to prevent disease you know we are able to identify the risk what can happen who is more at risk for instance if we identify some genetic mutation we do know that those people are at risk for developing example is breast cancer and we will be able to offer them preventive health practices second is we can diagnose based on certain genetic information and then we can plan the treatment appropriately for those groups of people so that we can reduce the side effects and give them targeted treatment for that particular condition having said all of this it's not really rocket science what we want to put forth to you today is that it's not exactly you know a very complex process where everybody has to get their um, genetic testing done in order to identify what problems could happen to them with respect to health we have simple solutions in our own system of medicine which uh, has been you know uh, in ayurveda for instance uh, you know diverged considerably uh, many times it's been for the good but then we shouldn't forget what it has to offer and how we can actually take health into our hands if we can identify what we can do by understanding our true nature so there's no one better than um, dr manasa to talk to us about this with her uh, knowledge and experience over to dr manasa thank you so much ma'am 
So, who are we? I'm Manasa. You might be some X, you might be some Y. That's the identity that we have given it to ourselves. But when we look around us, we are part of this nature. Ayurveda calls us as the Purusha, irrespective of our gender, whether Stree, Purusha, it's not that gender, Stree, Purusha. It is Purusha, a very living individual. We are the Purusha and the nature present outside. That's the Prakriti. The Loka is called Prakriti. And we are very similar to the outside nature. For instance, you might have seen these pictures are passing over the internet during COVID season. Like lungs, you have trees, so don't cut the trees. You need those oxygens, they come from the trees. Look, they are so similar to lungs. Similarly, the this picture, it's the galaxy and this is the neurons inside our body. Structurally, they look same. Similarly, we have blood vessels in our body which matches with the rivers that flows on the nature. So whatever we have inside our body, the bigger version is in outside. Whatever is seen outside in the loka, we have the miniature version inside. So we are part of this nature. Even structurally, when we talk, Ayurveda talks the same structures as in allopathy, like heart, brain, lungs, bone, etc. But when it comes to the functional part, the physiology, we talk about three components, vata, pitta, and kapha. These vata, pitta, and kapha, they are responsible for all the activities in the body. Wondering what is vata, pitta, kapha? So generally, we have a tendency to say, ayo nange pitta agire, when we have some burning sensation or darkness in front of the eyes. And we say kapha agire edenali. So whatever we say, these statements, no, they are generally the derailed one. They are not in their normal state. We, the, we talk in terms of disease that is generally expressed by other person. So they have some basic physiological function. So these vata, pitta and kapha, they are called three doshas in Ayurveda, not the dosa which we South Indians are generally fond of. They are the three doshas which are responsible for all the activities in our body. The first one, vata, okay, it is composed of vayu and akasha mahabhuta. Uh, there is a theory in Ayurveda, in the Sanatana Dharma, everywhere, whatever we take, every living thing is composed of these Panchamaha Bhutas. It's okay if these Bhutas are flying over your head, we can ignore that. Just to understand, Vata is something which is responsible for all the movements, the blinking of the eyes, to inhale, to exhale, the way, I mean, to move our hands. Every activity, this blood circulation inside the body from very subtle, the heartbeat, okay, from very subtle to every activity, the voluntary and the involuntary activity, everything, it is governed by vata and it is the basic dosha. Next comes pitta. It is composed of agni and jala mahabhuta. The main activity, to remember, the main activity of pitta is associated with the digestion. But the, it could be nutrition, metabolism, or maintaining the body temperature. Everything, it is associated with the pitta. Third component is kapha. It is responsible for the stability. See, we have joints. We have a stable body frame. That frame, that stability, it comes by kapha. And generally, the immunity what we possess is also reflected by this dosha. This dosha, everyone will have all three doshas at, in all our body, but they have some specific place. For example, we walk everywhere in the home. We use every part of our house, but we have something called our room, right? Person X will have this room, person Y will have that room. Similarly, Vata has main uh, residence in our intestines. Pitta has main residence in our stomach. Uh, we, I mean, in a layman language, it has residence in the GI system, that is the uh, gastrointestinal tract, and kapha, mainly in the chest. So we are composed of, uh, as I said, structurally, we are composed of uh, brain, heart, lung, etc. And yes, all of us, we have vata, pitta, kapha. So what is different? Supposingly, you meet someone and say hi.
one person he'll start talking like anything he'll tell how is he not just how is he he'll tell about all his family what happened this week everything at the same time the other person will say i'm fine that's it so even on conversation right so it takes a lot of time for you to extract something from someone so each individual is different few are very talkative few don't talk at all another instance two people let's consider they've gone to a same dietitian they've taken up a very good diet they're following everything told by them they're doing exercise properly one person loses weight despite of a bit of cheating or following everything for another person it's very difficult we generally cannot say why and in a family everyone eats a similar food few face severe acidity at times constipation at times bloating but not everyone have you ever pondered why because in a family it's, it's the same genetic makeup right and just by skipping one meal few will get severe headache even to the even migraine kind vomiting etc but few can run a day without eating anything or they can be happy just with one meal a day why we see so much of difference when we say structurally physiologically these are the components so the answer for all these questions is we all are different our basic constitution our body type is different from others so that concept in ayurveda is called prakriti so the vata pitta kapha they vary in each individual in their basic activities so depending on the variations like the permutation and the combination each individual will have different constitution so there are seven basic constitutions of prakriti vata pitta kapha the combination pitta kapha vata pitta and vata kapha and the best one tridosha it's very rare to find the balanced one the tridoshas and uh, quite rarely i mean generally no one will be uh, just a single prakriti person it will be more or less it will be a combination of two or i mean one or two doshas and we have all the i mean trait it's not just i have only uh, kapha characters or only vata characters or only pitta characters we'll have every characters in us but one dosha will be having a dominance so how do we know what prakriti do we belong to this assessment usually is done based on the lakshanas like all the acharyas of ayurveda they have given n number of lakshanas starting from the body physique to the metabolism mental characters their behaviors everything so based on the lakshanas and few with the examination we come to a conclusion that this is the prakriti of that person so as i asked you before just keep yourself ready with a piece of paper uh, you can write v p k that is vata pitta and kapha i will ask you few questions if your answer is s for that question give a score of 1 if no leave it so i hope you guys are ready shall we proceed yes madam yeah thank you so uh, this is the question these questions have to you have to score yourself under b vata okay do you have difficulty putting on weight like is gaining weight difficult for you nan eshtindrunu dappane agala nange dappa agbeku but you don't put on so if the answer is yes just give one under that b category do you sleep poorly andre nidde kammi varutta and in, do you get up with the slightest disturbance around you or you are if your sleeping duration is less do you learn quickly and forget quickly learning is very easy for you but retaining is very difficult if yes give the score do you have short attention span like the focus drifts many of you might be thinking what to do after uh, this session so if you have short attention span do you get a lot of creative new ideas every day 
or once in a while do you get more creative thoughts and ideas about it could be about your work or personal life anything some new ideas no doubt you start some task with very enthusiasm but do you fail to complete those tasks if you touch your skin do you feel it is cold and dry and do you feel at times your digestion is good you can digest well and at times you have bloating and constipation kind and you have thin hairs which are dry and that tend to break thin hairs which are dry it could be long also but they tend to break frizzy like how many times ever you comb with it it comes out and do you tend to be hyperactive does your thirst depends on season like in summer you drink more water and in winter you don't need much of it okay proceeding to the next question pitta if you our answer is yes score yourself under p so do you excel in doing multitasking that you can do multitasking without fail i mean you fulfill the activity and can you learn quickly and also remember for a longer time you learn quickly and forget slowly and is it easy for you to gain as well as lose weight like if you eat well sweets and other things for a week you'll put on some weight and if you go on walk or some exercise for another week you'll shut down easily do you get angry or irritated or do you get headache when you skip a meal or when you are hungry do you like to be around successful people when you touch your skin does it feel hot few people feel so hot that uh, they tend to ask oh jora bandidya ninge anta that kind of uh, hotness in few it will be there do you sweat more compared to others like now it's anyway summer but generally the other person will be sitting comfortably and you will be like dripping and even that sweat smells very bad do you have early graying of hairs or early uh, baldness or wrinkling of the skin are you moderately active and do you experience excessive thirst like irrespective of season you require more water more quantity of water or fluids i hope you have scored yourself we're moving to the next dosha kapha again the score give it under k category do you have an excellent endurance andre physical strength is it really good like you can walk or do gymming or enadro mane kelsa without getting tired you can can you do it is it you are a slow learner but once you learn you will remember it for very longer time is it easy for you to gain weight and very difficult for you to lose en madadru nan enu tinode illa eat very less but still i am very fat i am not able to lose weight and do you get very deep sleep at times you know someone even complains like so many things happened you were you didn't even get up and a few people have that sound sleep do you become possessive on occasion and 
and again when you touch your skin does it feel cool and moist if you feel cold and dry it is under vata if you feel cold and moist soft it is under kapha do you have thick and oily hair do you have very big eyelashes are you lethargic lethargic in the sense somberi antalla not exactly at times yes kapha uh, prakriti people are prone for that but generally you know they are not the people who start some activity quickly you need some push you know you can do it start athara push so are you lethargic at times you want to start exercise or to start something good and irrespective of the season you don't feel much of the thirst or requirement for the fluids i hope uh, you've all finished so you can look down the scores and whatever the category in whichever category the score is more your prakriti is dominant with that dosha so if you ask me uh, so is this my final prakriti then the answer is absolutely no with 30 questions we cannot decide your prakriti it's a very elaborate assessment where we consider right from your stature the height uh, even the the way your teeth are your nail beds everything to your digestion your sleep and your many characters and even your pulse we consider all these things and then we decide the prakriti but this is just to provoke an interest in you to kindle that thoughts in those lines but definitely you can make out which is the dominant dosha in you based on these questions for you people to understand uh, help you understand better i have few examples like uh, rahul dravid everyone knows right the pool captain wall etc so palm composed right from uh, his build it comes under kapha prakriti pitta prakriti but his calm composedness so definitely he will be dominant with kapha trait and another personality virat kohli never met these people not an assessment for them but based on the their appearance what we have seen on the media so he will be probably with a pitta dominance because you know that aggressiveness getting into controversies it's more in pitta nature okay and uh, i believe most of you have seen shole kindly excuse me if you have not seen it are the typical hema malini character the chatterbox the talkative hyperactive that's a typical uh, character of the vata prakriti person so why do we need to know about these doshas to know the probable disease and to prevent them in advance in further discussion i'll tell you what all dominant prakriti people will be prone for which problem to plan a diet there is a popular saying in kannada uta ballavanige roga vila if you know what to eat you are you are almost healthy so you can plan a diet better to understand yours ourselves better so how to work on ourselves for instance i'll tell you i have vata dominance in my trait and i tend to talk fast so i'll even in last session i thought i did speak very slowly but i i came to know later i was very fast so i'm telling myself and i'm working on myself to talk slow that is how you can we can understand ourselves better and we can work on it and to know others for instance you have a friend who is of kapha prakriti we know they need a push okay that lethargy you you have to push them tell them to do some activity get into some exercise if they are of pitta nature you know don't get into fight with them it's like they tend to be aggressive okay and if you have a vata friend they'll have x idea today and y idea tomorrow until and unless it's done it's finalized you can't believe that it it will be done so it helps you to have a nice social atmosphere when you know what other person is knows like many many of us we read many personality books right before going to interview if the interview is holding his hands like this he is not uh, taking your your talk we have those kind of descriptions like right? similar things we can learn with the help of the prakriti so the most importantly the person with who has vata dominance they'll be prone for 
constipation, insomnia, that is no sleep or reduced sleep or very disturbed sleep and the flatulence that is a gassy kind of thing, pains in the joint, nerve diseases, more or less body ache, bloating and tinnitus. Um, but the uh, increased age, you get to hear some ringing sound in the ear or some annoying thing in the ear that is more in Vata people and tremors and skin dryness. Pitta type people will be prone for burning sensation, could be acidity, gastritis, that sore belching and excessive sweating resulting in rashes and itching and they have more tendency to catch jaundice and generally uh, stomatitis, that is the mouth ulcer, the commonest uh, trouble for the Pitta people is the mouth ulcer and they are more prone for bleeding disorders. And Kapha people, they will be more prone for tonsillitis and uh, kind of uh, drowsiness, laziness, indigestion, obesity and uh, related to respiratory problems. See, they cause more problem in their own house. Like Vata has seat in uh, intestine, so they, it gives more trouble there. Indivis uh, similarly, Pitta and Kapha. So now you know what is your basic trait and what will you be prone for. So now let's know what is good practice and what should be avoided to have a better health. Coming to Vata Prakriti, it's better to have hot meal which are easily digestible, Uddu, black gram and uh, green gram, sesame, kichdi, light soups, they are very good for Vata Prakriti people. For Vata Prakriti people, do not overeat and uh, by nature, you will be fast. Don't do eat fast. Chew your food properly. And millet is something that will not suit Vata Prakriti people. In the fruits and uh, vegetables, you can go for avocado, coconut, uh, mango, pineapple, anything which has sweet and uh, sour in dominance. Which uh, fruits like nearly uh, handu, um, okay, and uh, melons in excess. It could even cucumber, vegetables like potato and too much of uh, sprouts and dried lentils that doesn't suit water type. Drumstick, onion and radish are good, but you can avoid too much of bittery uh, vegetables. And best tip practice would be whole body oil massage daily. And uh, you can avoid excessive uh, exercise or exertion. So your body will tell you stop at this point. So you better stop at this point and staying warm. Like generally AC uh, and continuous fan can trigger the body pain and ache. So ideal would be wear a thin shrug or a light jacket so that your joints are uh, warm and you don't experience that pain in further. And one thing what I want to tell Vata Prakriti people is though you may not put on weight by eating whatever you eat, but let it be mindful because the picture will be seen in uh, other parameters like uh, it will have the cholesterols or the other negative things that will be visible. There will be no much weight gain. That's it. So Eshtanjana, we hear them talking, Ayo, Eshtanjana, they are so lean. How come they have cholesterol? So high cholesterol or the lipid levels doesn't have anything to do with your uh, body fat. They are related, not that they're not related, but don't assume that you do, if you don't put on weight, you will not uh, have any issues. Coming to Pitta Prakriti people, never try intermittent fasting. It is not for you. Don't skip the meal. Eat at regular intervals. Okay. And uh, avoid spicy, very hot food and uh, food that are sore, like sour cream, buttermilk, curd, which are very sore in nature. And generally, everyone says, oh, garlic is so good for cardiac health. And if you are a person of Pitta Prakriti, and if you eat garlic uh, in one or two days, you will get to know the result. Your body will tell you you have done a mistake. So if you are of Pitta Prakriti, consume garlic in a very moderation. Even if you want to consume it, saute it with ghee or butter. So you will have good benefit for it. Uh, Good benefit of it. So coriander and fennel are the spices that suits you better. Calm and cool, well uh, ventilated atmosphere is nice for you. And uh, as far as possible, train your mind. Don't get into fights or heated argument. And uh, ghee is very good. Uh, dravya, rather best dravya. Dravya is any substance. So that's the best thing for the Pitta Prakriti person. Coming to Kapha Prakriti person, 
eat in smaller portion these are the people if you feed them they will eat like you to keep on serving them they will never say no they'll eat it they don't if they don't want to waste food on the plate they want it they don't want it they'll eat it don't do that so eat smaller portion millet is something which suits kapha prakriti person sorry i forgot to tell pitta prakriti person will have very good digestion so salads raw salads they suit you better so with kapha prakriti person um millets uh, they go well and uh, in terms of uh, vegetables leafy vegetable radish they suit well avoid uh, heavy tuberous like sweet potato beetroot banana etc and uh, dairy skimmed milk is better than the full uh, heavy dairy because for kapha prakriti the digestion is always on the lower side so you can use more of spices like ginger garlic in your food and honey is something that is best for kapha prakriti person but again honey to use honey we have rules uh, last session we did speak a lot about honey so you can check that uh, in the previous session and stay in warm and active atmosphere try avoiding being sedentary okay so now that i know my prakriti i know what is good for me what is bad for me so for instance kapha prakriti people okay radish is good so can i keep on eating radish and say i'll never fall in no because it's not just us as i told before the prakriti the outside prakriti we are the purusha the prakriti we are similar so even it has vata pitta kapha in it so the nature has vata that is the air which moves sun representing the pitta and the moon representing the kapha the soma it said it does the dharan of jagat deha this is deha jagat deha the external nature it is the way our body is managed by vata pitta kapha the external environment is also managed by vayu surya and soma that is chandra they also have different dominance like vata pitta kapha dominance throughout the year so unlike the western calendar we don't have just four seasons uh, summer winter uh, spring uh, not just four seasons we have six rutus the vasanta rutu grishma rutu varsha sharat hemanta and shishira so when i say varsha rutu it is the rainy season grishma is the summer season sharad is the autumn hemanta is the early winter shishira is the late winter and vasanta is the spring season so in varsha and grishma that is rainy and summer vata will be dominant in the nature so our food and our uh, activities they have to sync with the nature similarly in sharad rutu and hemanta rutu pitta will be dominant and in shishira and vasanta kapha will be dominant so i'm not correlating like uh, spring i mean vasanta in the sense uh, from april to uh, from march to april, mid april i'm not telling that because we have to look at the lakshanas outside okay so when it is raining continuously that's the varsha rutu that is rainy season and uh, when we see the fresh uh, springs uh, in the plant like they shed their old leaves and uh, new leaves new flowers they set in that is the vasanta rutu and when severe summer sets in that's the grishma rutu and it's not just applicable for india it is for other parts of the world as well so we have to go based on the lakshanas at times what happens it will be a vasanta rutu or some other rutu but it starts raining because of the cyclone so at that time what we have to do we have to adopt the lifestyle that is told for varsha rutu so though we are of pitta prakriti our digestion will be generally good but in vasanta rutu for everyone that digestion comes down see we will be eating so until january uh, it will be cold and we will be craving for food all the time suddenly post holy uh, the appetite drops down maybe mothers or the person who cooks at home realizes it well because you know uh, the food uh, will be still remaining after uh, even after the lunch or the dinner uh, once the summer sets in we say ayo summer i'm not able to eat anything you know beda anusthan i just want to have some liquid and so there will be drastic decrease in the appetite the digestion will be very less so we have to eat food which is very easily digestible the immunity will be moderate to low and 
The spices which can be used in this season is cardamom, clove, and turmeric. And we have to avoid heavy food in this season. And uh, probable disorders are like we are prone for allergies, cold, cough, fever. It's called spring fever only, right? So these are the Vasant Rutu thing. So coming to summer, throughout the six Rutus, this is the place where we have weakest digestion. That's a summer. Like uh, we experience that fatigue. You now without doing anything, we experience that tiredness. So eat very bland and uh, the immunity will also be very low. It's a season of mangoes. So uh, eat ripe and sweet mangoes so it won't aggravate your pitta. And Shrikanda is something you can enjoy. It is uh, nourishing for the body. And to be avoided is alcohol, millets and curds. Please know for these three in summer because uh, millets, these are very heavy for digestion. Curds, they are highly acidic in nature. And alcohol, it's highly acidic in nature. So that doesn't suit in summer. Particularly if you are a Pitta Prakriti, absolutely boycott these three. If Vata or Kapha, very moderation, still don't take chances. That's what I would like to say. And generally, acidity, skin rashes and other things will be seen. So in Varsha Rutu, the digestion will be moderate to weak. Rain is synonymous with the bhaji and pakoda, but still the digestion will be less. So be in, you eat bhajis in moderation. Okay. And you can use ginger, jeera, and uh, the sindava lavana, rock salt in your food. And avoid green leafy vegetables. In rainy season, uh, tubers and green leafy uh, vegetables, please avoid them. They are not good because... Uh, in terms of uh, current research, we can say that they'll have more of infestation uh, during this season, so better to avoid them. And will be prone for diarrhea, stomach, I mean, as vata will be dominant in this season, joint pain and uh, disorders of the intestines are very common. Next rutu is the Sharad rutu. So in this, we have Ashvija and Kartika. So generally, initially, because Following Varsha Rutu, the digestion will be very, power will be very less. So eat very easily digestible food. It's better to fast. That's where in Navratri comes in. So and barley is something good in this season. You know, the when it rains, the watery content in the nature would have increased similarly in us. Uh, it's a layman uh, term with the water content. So barley is something which acts, which helps to take out that excess water in us. Amla, uh, that is the Nelikai, and ghee, raisins, they are they suit very well in this season. And uh, to avoid is curd, and anything that triggers acidity has to be avoided in Sharaputra because many people they take care of uh, spices in summer because uh, it will be a striking one. But in uh, Sharad Rutu, they don't focus, and too many acidity cases and migraine issues they flare up in this season. Hemanta is a season where you'll have excellent digestion in the whole year. So you can have heavy food, healthy fats, and don't fast in this season. See, the appetite will be so good if you start fasting. It can harm the healthy tissues of the body. That is what Ayurveda says. So avoid fasting in this season. After that, Shishira Rutu comes in. So again, the digestion will be very good. So season for sugarcane and honey and the new harvest, the bhogi, lori, pangal. So everyone knows it. You, are, uh, you have the fresh harvest. You can have them to avoid cold food. Cold food just generally doesn't mean uh, ice cream and uh, other thing. Anything that has more of sheetha virya because kapha will be at the peak. And the, this is the season where we see maximum urticaria cases. So in different season, uh, we have different festival. That is the speciality of our tradition, right? So the upcoming Yugadi. As I said, in Vasanta Rutu, uh, we will be prone for kapha disorders. Neem, that is known to reduce the kapha. We take along with jaggery because neem has something it can aggravate the vata. So to pacify that, we take uh, neem with guda, that is jaggery, along with little of ghee. And even after that, we have Ram Navami, where we don't make uh, heavy sweets or nothing, right? And Ram Navami, Majige is taken, Bella the Panaka is taken. So where the Kapha is easily eliminated through our system. Deepavali, the festival in Kartika, where uh, 
ಶರದ್ ಋತು ದ ಪಿತ್ತ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಅಭ್ಯಂಗ ದ ಎಣ್ಣೆ ಸ್ನಾನ ಆಯಿಲ್ ಬಾತ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಂಡೇಟರಿ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ರೀಜನ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದೀಪಾವಳಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಶ್ ಪಿತ್ತ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯರ್ ಟು ದೀಪಾವಳಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಶರದ್ ಋತು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಸೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನವರಾತ್ರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಮೆನಿ ಡೂ ಫಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದ ನೈನ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪೂಜಾ ಮೋರ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿಲೀಜನ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ದೀಪಾವಳಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ತುಳಸಿ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ ವೇರ್ ದ ಆಮಲಕ್ಕಿ ದ ಗೂಸ್ಬೆರಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅ ರಿಚುಯಲ್ ದಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಕ್ರಾಂತಿ ದ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ವಿಂಟರ್ ಪೀಕ್ ವಿಂಟರ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಂಪ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಎಳ್ಳು it reduces uh, it brings that sagrada that is needed for the body it's not just the uh, pill which is taken we take peanuts also peanuts they can trigger pitta like anything so to control that we have jaggery in it jaggery it reduces pitta and vata so in a, in general it balances the whole stuff mahashivaratri see uh, hemanta shishira where are uh, digestion is so good even in the nature we have so much of you know peas uh, avare kaalu everything heavy for digestion those things will be there we can indulge in them and shivaratri is like alami okay fine it's ending now you have to work on your body the jagarane is told because the kapha will be more in the body that has to reduce and the fasting everything that's told by the significance of shivaratri not these four or five festival each and every festival they have their own significance the sum of the religion uh, local uh, practices as well if you are, any of you are from coastal or mangalore area there is a practice of consuming the kashaya of one mara during ati amavasya that is uh, bhimana amavasya uh, celebrated in here so they drink kashaya of that uh, tree which has anti malarial effect because in that region uh viral fevers are very common during rainy season it helps to combat that so each local practice and festival they have a lot of health benefits know the reason for celebrating them so we are always geared up for the season we know how to handle it we know how to handle summer very well we take good amount of fluids we take good rest we stay home when we are going outside we use gear like sunglasses hats etc where do we fail in the transition the diseases are more during the transition like before beginning of summer before this season if you see a general practitioner's clinic it will be full everyone will be coughing uh, they have fever and uh, one week just before monsoon sets in we have a uh, lot of cases with loose stools diarrhea etc so the transition is where we fail and it's the place where we have to focus as in nature changes as the weather starts changing we have to change our routine so that we don't fall ill so generally as we have vata pitta kapha nature has vata pitta kapha few of the uh, every dravya every substance that we use also has vata pitta kapha so we have to keep that in mind and uh, consume it so that to have we'll have a better health for instance we think curd is very coolant it reduces acidity no actually curd is very acidic in nature it triggers acidity and if we eat heavy dinner the kapha triggers we don't it doesn't get digested and uh, next day morning we feel very a lot of pain in joints we don't feel like getting up and uh, consuming uh, irrational uh, amount of bitter taste like drinking karela juice neem juice you know uh, if it's not done judiciously it can uh, dry up your joints leading to arthritis and honey on daily basis uh, it's already discussed uh, how to handle honey because again it's drying if you just take only honey it makes your body a lot dry so these are the wrong practices few wrong practices each and every food will have their own pros and cons so you must be aware about them to consume so to sum up prakriti is something which is formed at a time of conception okay the time where the sperm and the ovum they join that that time prakriti is formed it cannot be changed but definitely we can overcome with the right practice 
in Pramia, we have a favorite line, genes are not destiny. I cannot say I am a Vata Prakriti person, so I'm prone for anxiety, I'm prone for uh, uh, indigestion issues. No, with a right habit, right practice, we can overcome it. And in short, it's like a personality development because it's not just physical, it's emotional, I mean, the mental health also. So we can prevent many health issues. Now we know what we are prone for. So if we take care, we can prevent them. And also not just the physical health, as I said, emotional health, because Vata, which is known for uh, that energy, if it is derailed, they'll have anxiety. Kapha, which is known for the calmness, if it is derailed, they'll be in depression. So you can know how to handle yourself. If you know you're a Pitta Prakriti person, work on your skin, prevent early um, wrinkling, and uh, we can prevent early graying. And always we should remember that we are part of this nature. We have to observe the nature and adapt ourselves as per the external environment. And as far as possible, eat local and seasonal because that suits your prakriti very much. And as there is a saying, Ati Yadre Amrutanu Visha, you know, like 2020 COVID season, everyone, everyone made kashaya with uh, shunti, arshina, menasu, uh, then uh, cinnamon, everything. For few, it worked well. Few had a lot of mouth ulcers. Few ended up in piles. The one man's medicine could be another man's poison. So, and even if you are taking it, it has to be balanced. Moderation is the key. So, for harmony of your health, you have to work along with the prakriti, not just your prakriti, the prakriti of nature as well. Thank you. So before we go ahead for question and answer session, I would uh, like to tell uh, Pramea at our organization, um, we do uh, women screening on a regular basis and uh, we offer a uh, well women clinic uh, with an integrated approach. Uh, actually, it's a panel of doctors and uh, we have online and offline yoga classes. Uh, we have other facilities like Zumba and uh, nutrition consultation. It's many sciences under one roof. So you can contact us.